We all recognize it when we see it. That moment in an anime when the animation swiftly transforms from its usual direct self into a fluid, breathtaking spectacle. It might be a major battle, a long-awaited love confession, or appropriate enough, a magical girl transformation. And then, when it's ultimately over, we pick our jaws up from the floor and wonder what the hell we just witnessed. What was that, a marvel? And why can't anime always be like that? Welcome to Broken Obsessed, today we're going to talk about the power behind Sakuga in anime. This short leap in animation quality is called Sakuga, which accurately translates to drawing pictures. But in anime terminology, Sakuga refers to these unique segments of an anime that the studio dedicates a superfluous amount of money and effort to so that they'll look absolutely astounding. These moments tend to be the most critical parts of the show, like opening themes and the fights we mentioned before, story climaxes, and transformations. Directors want to leave a lasting impression on viewers by putting the animator's effort where it really counts in these concentrated moments of pure aesthetic pleasure. It's almost universal that some of the best animations will be used in the opening theme throughout all anime. After all, this is the initial impression that viewers get when they start watching. It's an excellent chance for the studio to show all that the series has to offer. Spectacular battles, snippets of essential scenes, dances, magic, or anything else they want the anime to be known for. And while the opening is repeated every episode, that hard work surely won't go to waste. In a gothic-inspired universe where monsters and witches terrorize the populace, there's only one method to fight back, demon weapons, who are humans that can convert into things like scythes or guns, partner with their wielders named Meisters to keep Death City safe. The Death Weapon Meister Academy, headed by Lord Death himself, trains pairs of teenagers to work unitedly as a Meister and Weapon. We witness Maka and Sol, a Meister Weapon duo who face new trials when they discover that an ancient evil is sleeping beneath the city. Soul Eater is an extremely stylized show, evoking western comics and Halloween imagery more than traditional anime designs. Its first opening, Resonance is well known as one of the best anime openings ever. The upbeat, spooky tune and the fast-paced action moves entirely to the beat. By settling so much time and effort into this opening, Studio Bones could show off fluid movement and impressive camera work. It promised viewers a fun, slightly dark shonen anime, overflowing with effortless style from beginning to end. Studios want to make the most vital moments unforgettable by pulling out the best animation they can create. They'll reveal every conflicted emotion on a character's face when they expose a big plot twist, every small hitch of breath during a confession of love. These scenes can last eternally in the memories of every fan if done well. In a utopian recreation of modern England, magic and sorcery lie just underneath the surface. An enigmatic mage named Elias purchases a depressed Japanese girl called Chice at an auction in hopes to raise her as his trainee and eventual bride. Don't think about the meaning too much. Little by little, Chice and Elias travel this mysterious realm of dragons and fey folk and learn more about each other every day. Even though this anime has beautiful animation all the time, Chice's return home to Elias in episode 12 was nothing short of breathtaking. Her clothes shift and ripple from the bounty of magic, the fire spirits cast soft shadows on her face, and her elegant dance through the sky pairs wonderfully with the remixed opening theme playing over the whole scene. When we first saw her pop out of the ribbons of fire into Elias' waiting arms, we knew their relationship was something unique. The Sakuga phenomenon is considered cheating a bit since anime movies have astronomically higher budgets than weekly TV shows. Still, studios indeed pull out all the stops when it comes to films. Whether it's a standalone film or a striking addition to a regular anime series, these works are created to impress the viewer. Perhaps the most notable would be Studio Ghibli films, which insert hand-painted backgrounds in exhaustively detailed settings to engage the viewer in their fantasy worlds. But surely, they're not the only ones who can attend Sakuga in movie form. Akira is one of the original masterpieces of Sakuga. The whole movie was animated at least 24 frames per second, much higher than the standard rate for animated films. 
This phenomenally labor-exhaustive technique made every moment of this legendary movie look fluid, realistic, and downright amazing. Particular remark goes to the motorcycle chase from the beginning and Tetsuo's surrealistic transformation near the end. The absolute amount of talent and man-hours that went into making this movie is staggering, and it presents it in every single frame. Why an anime can't have this exceptional standard of quality throughout its entire runtime? We have to take a slight look at how much money anime studios have to produce their shows for the answer. Unlike American studios, which get from $350,000 up to multiple millions for each episode, Japanese studios only get about $123,000 to $300,000 from one episode. This means that anime has to use shortcuts to save money for their extensive sakuga scenes. The shortcuts include only animating eyes and mouths in a dialogue scene, outsourcing work to minor studios, reusing footage, airing shamefully bad animation on TV, and cleaning it up for the Blu-ray and international releases, and much more. This kind of corner cutting was especially prevalent in hand-drawn cell animation days, but still continues sometimes to this day. In the modern anime scene, where the tedious process of hand-drawing each frame isn't needed anymore, it's simpler than ever for studios to create bigger quality animation at a low price. Sadly, that doesn't mean that every show made these days can be sakugatastic. In fact, the progress of computer animation gave studios even more ways to cut corners. One of these uses computer graphics to portray a complex object in movement, like an enormous monster or a vehicle. CG can look beautiful and blend in smoothly with 2D art, but it doesn't tend to turn out that well in a lower budget. And as much as I love the classic, anyone who remembers Initial D will know precisely what we mean. Takumi Fujiwara's tofu expression runs are way more powerful than he initially bargained for. His father dares him to drive around a mountain pass at top speed without dropping the cup of water sitting in his dashboard. The local street racing scene notices his talents, and soon, he finds himself intertwined in the high-stakes game of drift racing. These days, Initial D is best known for its Eurobeat soundtrack, hilariously over-the-top scenarios, and bad or good CG cars depending on your opinion. To be honest, it's from the late 90s, but the transition between flat 2D characters and low pulley cars zooming along mountain roads is jarring to say the least. Even today, it's still challenging to find a happy match between 2D and 3D in animation. Sakuga is all about spectacle. It doesn't influence the story or even necessarily the show's overall quality. Still, it does provide the kind of novel experience that we crave from anime. Whether or not it's worth the small effort for the less critical animation is something that can be debated series by series. Still, we're just glad we get our Sakuga moments at all. So how did you like the video? What are your favorite Sakuga scenes? And only for fun, what are your favorite cliches of bad corner cutting animation? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload, and you can enjoy the excellent content Content we send your way. I've been broken obsessed in my otaku ways and I will see all of you lovely people next time.